So let's just, before going further talking about terminologies, I want to tell you a, a, a hard truth that we all need to understand, the best hack that is out there. Um, before even onboarding, you need to think about if you're onboarding, you have already talked to your users or not. Um, regardless of what stage you are at, you're early user, or you're an end user, or you are, let's say, if you are, if you are, if you are personally as a SaaS company or product company, uh, growth stage, scale stage, or early stage, you need to talk to your users. This is something that you have to keep doing it over time to keep understanding users. If you understand your users really well, you can create a delightful customer experience. So now let's talk about onboarding. Um, so about onboarding, I want to just tell you that it's not a substitute of great UX. People think that um, having an onboarding tool or improving the onboarding, I will have an amazing UX. It actually is about enhancing and helping it rather than uh, great, having a great UX. A uh, product like Basecamp, which is a, like a project management tool, has no onboarding. It's very simple to use. But like when a user comes to that specific screen, they're like, hundreds of buttons there. So which button to click first? That's the job of the onboarding, to enhance that specific button and say, hey, you're here, I don't want you to waste your time. I know what you're doing. Let me let you, let you me help you with clicking that button. And you will understand what happens in that promise that you. So this is a granular user adoption model where you can segment the user. So it starts with a new user. Um, and I'll give you examples at each stage. Uh, but we'll take one example for now, uh, which is, uh, let's say, as a, buffer social media scheduling tool. So when you come as a first time user, when you're first time in there in the application as first web run session, you're a new user, you haven't done anything, and you want the user to move to the next state, which is try. And try is a state where they actually try the application. Um, in buffer's case, when they actually connect their social media is the stage where they are in the trial phase, where they say, okay, you know what? They have a little bit of intent to use the pl platform. And so this is a good example of HubSpot. I love that. So HubSpot is a CRM tool for people who don't know. HubSpot, what it does is it, HubSpot actually goes ahead and uh, gives you a free tool as a product-led onboarding, product-led software. Um, and they also ask you to install their Chrome extension so that you can automate a lot of stuff. Um, so I use it for like tracking the emails, which is for free. But then what I did was I was actually sending emails to a lot of people by copy pasting my simple sample uh, template through from notes to HubSpot Gmail. Um, in my, only in my Gmail, not even HubSpot itself, in my Gmail because they, 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 have, they are already in my Gmail Chrome extension. So when I copy pasted that once or twice, I, I saw this pop-up model and there it says, save it, uh, try it copy pasting, uh, try uh, templates. Template is that feature where you can automate a lot of copy pasting. That that itself was the aha moment from you. Like, oh my God, this thing actually is evaluating where I am and helping me what to do next. And they're trying to upsell me to template because I was a free user. But this is something that is amazing because this tries to change your behavior. This tries to change how you were actually using software before and how you will use software. Right now. Custom events is actually um, um, a way to know exactly what events are happening inside your application, and there'll be hundreds of events happening inside your application. It, imagine, let's say, a restaurant. When you go to a restaurant, there's a there's a uh, at the door. There's somebody greeting you. That's one custom event happening, which is let we're looking at non-digital way. The, the 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 front gate guy says hi. Then you go inside. And when you sit in, sit, when you sit in the restaurant, you're not standing, you're sitting in the restaurant, only then a waiter comes and gives you the menu card. That's an event happened. You sat down, the waiter noticed and gave you the menu card, right? And then he started asking what you would like to have. So this is all happening outside of the world as well, outside of digital world as well. The same thing you have to give it inside the digital world as well by seeing what is the initial aha, what is, their active, what is your activation moment inside your product-led software, and then adopt it to your exactly user journey. What the first few events that's going to happen first day, second day, seven day, 10th day, 30th day, and then 
map it out because if you map it out then it will work out perfectly then you know what happens at each stage and what you want things to happen at each stage and then push them to the next